Aaron Goltz with Casey Jacobson. And Casey, tonight we're going to be watching two teams. Momentum going in very different directions. The Golden Bears, they've won four in a row. Meanwhile, Tad Boyle's Buffaloes, desperate for a win tonight. Yeah, Cal has won their last three contests with game-winning three-point shots, all by different players. So naturally, I'm wondering, who's going to be the guy that steps up for Cal tonight? And Colorado's been struggling all season with injuries, but their best three players, Askia Booker, Josh Scott, and Xavier Johnson, are all healthy tonight, and they're going to need all three of them if they're going to turn their season around. And with Adam I, let's take a look now the starting five for the Colorado Buffaloes for Askia Booker at the point and for Josh Scott down low the first time those two have been on the floor at the same time since January the 7th Meanwhile, on the other side, for the Cal Bears, you look at a trio of guards that are about as good as they come in the Pac-12. Tyrone Wallace, Jabari Bird, healthy once again, and Jordan Matthews. As Gonzo Martin has said, his offense runs so much more efficiently with Jabari Bird on the floor, spreading the offense out. Cal Bears, 15-9, and 5-6 and six in conference play. Meanwhile, the Buffaloes, 11-11, and 11, four up, six down in the Pac-12. Controlled right away by Skia Booker, who did not play in that blowout loss here at home against Utah with a hip injury. That was the worst home loss suffered by the Buffaloes under Tad Boyle and since joining the Pac-12. Dominic Collier, the true freshman out of the Denver area, getting the start tonight. Gordon down low from the block. Again, he won't go in. Kravish the rebound. Here come the Bears. And I think it's critical that Cal get off to a good start tonight. I know each team wants to get off to a great start, but it's more important for Cal. In their last four wins, they have led at halftime. So that tells me that this team needs confidence early. Xavier Johnson penetrates, goes with the left hand, short, and a rebound there underneath by Bird. And I'd, like, I'd like to see Colorado go into Josh Scott in their last loss at U, or against Utah here a couple nights ago. They didn't get him going enough. Pretty touch there by Kravich, contested by Scott. And the Bears on the board first tonight. That loss against Utah, only the 12th under the watchful eye of Tad Boyle in his four-plus years. Xavier Johnson fouled, he'll shoot two. Gonzo Martin in his first year at the helm of the Bears from East St. Louis, Illinois, four-year player at Purdue. Three years at Tennessee, took the ball to a Sweet 16 last season before coming to Berkeley. What did he have good things to say earlier today about Gene Cady, his coach at Purdue? What did he tell us, Casey, that if you play defense, if you rebound, if you go to class, everything else will take care of itself? Yeah, we had a lot of fun. He's got great personality, like you mentioned. I mean, yeah, so his philosophy is, like you mentioned, it's rebound, defend, play hard. But can we add a fourth dimension? How about hit game-winning three-point shots? <laughs> that always helps. That's a good, good formula. Bears break this full-court press, almost intercepted there by Wesley Gordon. Quickly to Booker. Booker, the floater, swatted away by Bird. Try to give a handoff underneath. Gordon to Scott. Last touch. So that full court pressure paid off with the turnover right away. Yeah, I think Tad Boyle, what he's trying to do is speed this game up a little bit. This Colorado team really is strong in the open court, so they're trying to force some of that action. Sam Singer on the floor now. He brings it across the court. Matthews getting an early breather. Singer's been one of those guys to hit a game winner. That was on Super Bowl Sunday at the University of Washington with about five seconds left, Ferry to three. Bird from San Francisco, high school All-American, McDonald's All-American, jump ball. And if you're Jabari Bird, you can't just take one dribble out of the pick and roll and pick it up, because then there, you have no advantage. And right here, you got to make your decision quick. You can't hold the basketball. It's going to be a turnover or a jump ball, like we just saw. With three to shoot, a travel there by Singer and a turnover. Tad Boyle now in his fifth season coaching the Buffaloes, a native of Greeley, Colorado. He was the state high school player of the year his senior year in high school, so he has Colorado written all over him. Played for Larry Brown at Kansas, three straight NCAA tournament appearances. A former commodities broker in Kansas City turned high school coach, then went on to Northern Colorado for four years, and then on to Boulder. 
Not a bad guy to learn from. Larry Brown, one of the best that's ever been. Leslie Gordon, nice step inside. Rattles it through. And a typical confetti shower after the first bucket there. Well, Wesley Gordon is very athletic, might be one of the most athletic players on this Buffalo roster, he and Jerron Hopkins. But he's normally not a post one-on-one -on -one player, so anything they can get from him one-on-one -on -one down there is a bonus. Tarwater puts up a three, and he circles it through. Dwight Tarwater, there might not be a more confident shooter in the nation than him, or maybe his backcourt mate, Sam Singer. These two guys are on cloud nine right now, shooting the ball with extreme confidence after their game winners. Really going low to Gordon this time, clanks off the iron. We've seen more Gordon down low than Scott so far. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused. I, I knew that Colorado would go down low because Cal doesn't have a ton of size with Kravish and Tarwater in their starting lineup, but I thought it would be more of Josh Scott. Singer hunting the baseline and State kicks out to Wallace straight away three. Oh, and if Tyrone Wallace is hitting his three-point shot, he might be unguardable because he's so good at getting to the rim. Muskia Booker creates a foul, puts the shoulder in, and he'll shoot. That goes against Starwater, his first. And that's the ultimate veteran's move, right? I mean, only you you never see freshman and sophomore make that move. That's the Skia Booker. He's the only senior on this Colorado team right there. Gets the defender in the air and draws the contact. We mentioned earlier that Booker did not play in the last game for the Buffaloes, that home loss to Utah by 28 points. That was only the second game that Booker has missed in his four years. Casey broke a string of 114 consecutive games. Most college players these days don't even get 50 games in, let alone 114 straight. Oh, so obviously he's a tough kid, and he must have been really hurting or he would have played in that Utah game. He's going to start a new streak, although he's a senior, so it's not going to be very long. <laughs> Buffalo's now within two. Mute Abidius on the floor. Now, he has not seen much playing time at all lately. So an early entry for him. As Matthews short of the jumper. Collier picks it up and brings it across. Loose ball and a foul. And as Wallace right there, his first. Wallace leading the Bears in scoring and rebounds and assists. Somebody needs somebody that Conzo Martin really needs on the floor. Scott has been quiet so far tonight. I haven't even seen him go inside the paint. They've been throwing in the ball off the high post elbow. That's about it. He took that deep two earlier. Xavier Johnson able to push it through. And they call him XJ. He is my X factor. For them, he is so versatile offensively. He can score inside and out. And he's been really struggling over his last three games. They need him desperately. Johnson has missed time this year with suspension with an ankle injury as well. Big piece of the puzzle for Tad Boyle. Kravish able to regain. Gets it stripped. Mute Abedius knocked away by Wesley Gordon. And Scott right there, too. Booker, transition, pull up, foot on the line. Quick possession, Kravish pulls it down. I'm not sure I like that shot from Askia Booker. He didn't really have numbers, and there was Cal defenders behind him. Pull that out and work the clock a little bit more. Singer, a little teardrop. Unlucky there, here comes Collier. Well, we've already seen the presence of Josh Scott. He got a block shot on the previous possession, and then he got another defensive rebound. They've really missed him. Gordon really battling down with Mute Abedius, who gets the block. Leslie Gordon picks it back up again. They'll reset with 16 to shoot. And Mute Abedius is a much better athlete than Dwight, Dwight Tarwater. We saw right there, Wesley Gordon couldn't get by him. Collier puts up a three, not close. And this will go to the Bears. Just underway here tonight from the Coors Event Center. Wesley Gordon coming off only 19 minutes after serving a first half suspension in that loss to Utah with an early two here. We're all tied up here in the first half. Big East Doubleheader. Coverage starts Monday at 7 on Fox Sports 1.
tied up for early goings here in Boulder, Cruz Event Center, and a pretty interesting signing early on here tonight, Casey. As you've seen Roger Mutabidius on the floor, he was really banging elbows and hips with Wesley Gordon down low. He's played only two minutes combined in the last five games, did not play at all in two of the last three. What do you make of that? Well, Conzo Martin noticed that Colorado was going exclusively to Wesley Gordon, their foreman, because Dwight Tarwater is not a very good defender. He's only six foot five, six foot six down there, so he puts in Mute Abedius for defensive purpose, a longer, much better athlete and a very good defender, one of their best. Well, Mute Abedius certainly passes the eye test. Long, lean, muscular. He can jump out of the gym. can really fly. Good athlete. So needed right now on defense. Dustin Thomas on the floor right now for the Buffaloes. Same with Trayshawn Fletcher. So a little bit of a different look out of the break for Tad Boyle. As Kingsley Okoro, the seven foot one big man out of Derby, England, gets it on the block. As he gets down right away, Tory Miller. So a lot of new faces on both sides coming out of the break. Yeah, both coaches are going deep into the bench already. But for your, for Tory Miller, he's done his job. If he can get Kingsley Okoro two steps off the block, there's no more need to push him out further than that. You've done your job now. Just play solid defense. Dalton in for Collier. Matthews, quick shot there. And that's a hot touch, hot release. And a lot of cows out of bounds under plays go to Jordan Matthews to come off the screen. Askia Booker's got to know that he needs to stay attached to his hip and get a hand up to contest that shot earlier. Miller down low and a foul. Okoro with a forearm there, a shove. Miller, a true freshman out of Kansas City, Kansas. 6'9", 255. We were talking during shoot-around today. Casey, that's a guy who looks like he might be needing shoulder pads. He might be in the wrong sport, but he's a very good athlete, Tad Boyle says. Yeah, I mean, look at him. He, he's a monster out there. Could be playing tight end. Let Denver Broncos, probably. Fletcher with a hard take. And foul on the way up. Well, it's clear to me that Colorado, I think Tad Boyle and the coaching staff, they got together and they encouraged their guys. We're going to attack the basket with the bounce. We're also going to get it down low. They didn't do that at all against Utah. And before they know it, they look up at the scoreboard and it's 17 to 3 and the game's all but over. Bird and Okoro both get a breather. Wallace comes back on. Same story for Tarwater. Fletcher, the youngest of four kids, wore number four in high school as a result, went to Lincoln High in Tacoma, Washington, Abe's all-time leading scorer. <laughs> Trying to get it back to Singer, loose ball, over and back. That's already, that press. Yeah, it's already the second time in the first six and a half minutes that California has turned the ball over on that pressure. <laughs> You need to make some adjustments there. Right there, Dwight Tarwater had it broken. He just was scared a little bit. And anytime you're pressing and a guy catches the ball and he looks scared, he's got that look in his eyes, it's like blood in the water. You just go after him. Booker trying to go back door, gets the pass, and knocked away by Wallace. Wallace pushing the gas pedal. Coast to coast, the right hand. No dice. Back and forth. Here it comes. Off the glass instead. And Cal now opening up the three-point lead. And you can tell the tempo. Both of these teams don't mind going up and down, although both of these coaches do mind the turnovers. These teams need to do a better job of taking care of the basketball, and they might be able to get what they want. Bucks have gotten five of their first nine points from the free throw line. Not much cooking from the floor so far. Fletcher cut up by Wallace. Thomas buries it. That ties things up 12 apiece. Well, he's averaging eight points and four rebounds in his last four games, so he's stepping up. I mean, he only averaged four going in into those games, so he's trying to make most of the minutes that he's been given. 
by Coach Tad Boyle. Nice shin fake there by Matthews. Sets up the drive and then the foul. Fletcher whistled for his first. Matthews grew up in San Francisco, not far from Berkeley. Phil Matthews, his father, was a coach at USF. Is, is that is still a coach in Riverside Community College in, in California? So anytime you go up against a coach's son, you know what? You know that there are smart, heady players, and Jordan Matthews is definitely that. He's taking a big leap forward from last year to this as the Bears retain. Looking for Kravish, battling down low on Miller. Kravish squares his hips on the block, the touch. Front iron, Hopkins, the rebound. First time we've seen him on the floor tonight. He's a slasher, but instead pulls it out. Miller trying to find some space. Pretty touch with the right hand. Dwight Tarwater doesn't have much of a chance to move Tory Miller off the block. If they're going to get it to number 14 down low in white, I think California needs to bring a second defender to help out. Wallace trying to get hot in this one. Matthews from the elbow. Quick pull-up jumper. Hopkins, a second straight rebound in his many possessions. And one of my favorite things to watch for Colorado is when Jerron Hopkins gets a rebound and goes coast to coast. He's electrifying. Miller, the baseline jumper. Hopkins pulls down another board. And they'll reset with a fresh 35. able to hold on. Hopkins almost gets it knocked loose. It is loose. Tarwater on the floor. And timeout called by Cal. Golden Bears, a four-game winning streak. Last three wins by a combined five points. As Kaiser Martin calls for a timeout. And a big reason why. Jordan Matthews, who gets the steal. And then the easy two. In okay, case so we talked about this in the open, this is a game that Colorado really needs to get their 4-6 in conference play, that tough loss against Utah. Tad Boyle has never lost back-to-back -back home games, and this is a big test against a hot Cal team. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, so even though they've been inconsistent, at least they've done a good job bouncing back and responding from losses. And that's as easy as it comes. Kravish completely uncontested underneath. Those are points that you cannot give up. I don't care what defense you're playing. Full court press, man-to-man -man in the half quarter zone uncontested dunks with no one around you those ones end up coming back to bite you no ski of Booker on the floor Talton running the point for the buffs Xavier Johnson nice move won't fall and we'll step aside to hear from Boulder the buffs with a completely different lineup than what they had against Utah and so far not working out Kravish the easy two has to go make some noise Saturday, regular season title races heat up in a doubleheader on Fox. First, D'Angelo Harrison looks to be the spark as St. John's takes on Xavier. Then Joseph Young leads the charge for Oregon against UCLA. The doubleheader tips off at noon Eastern on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Should be a couple of good ones. Aaron Goldsmith, Casey Jacobson, glad to have you with us tonight from inside the Coors Event Center in beautiful Boulder, Colorado. Bears leading by a point here in the first half. Xavier Johnson inbounds, gets it to Hopkins. And this might be the only time in a Skia Booker's career that he's got to post up a smaller player. So he's trying to take advantage of it. He tucks it like a running back high off the glass, and it falls through. And I like the aggressive play from the Skia Booker. He is their leader. You see him still holding that hip. I still think he's playing hurt out here. Didn't look hurt on that drive, though. And smaller players, Brandon Chaka at 5'9", on the floor for the first time tonight for Conzo Martins Bears. Shifty move by Wallace instead, gives it up to Kravish. Scott right there behind him, slaps it free, and it stays with the Bears. 
And earlier in the conference, when I watched Cal play, every time David Kravish caught the ball, a double team was coming. So he should have plenty of experience and practice going up against double teams. It shouldn't surprise him. It was then when they had uh, Jabari Bird was still hurt. And so the book on California was take away Tyrone Wallace drives and David Kravish post-ups. Scott, another block. He's had a handful already tonight. Buffalo's five field goals, five different players so far. Just under nine minutes to go in the first half. Parker. Hopkins off the dribble where he's so good. Tries to get it to Scott, but right there to pick it is Singer. I'd like to see Jerron Hopkins just step right into that 15-footer. I mean, he's open, and he's very capable of making that shot. Just take it. Wallace launches a three. Gordon, Johnson battling for the rebound. Xavier Johnson pulls it down. Look at the screen from Scott. Pick and roll. Scott trying to get the touch. Instead, Wallace comes down with it. One of the best rebounders in the Pac-12 this year. Only Josh Hawkinson and Kevon Looney have more rebounds this year than Wallace does. Hawkinson for the Cougs. Looney for the Bruins. And this is nice ball movement by Cal, but they're not really trying to attack until late. Seven to shoot. Under five to shoot. Wallace trying to create against Hopkins. The left hand. He's met by Wesley Gordon, and he's fouled. Looks like Hopkins got him before he got that far. Buffalo's back on top now by a point. Under eight minutes to go here in the first half. Casey, last year, Josh Scott, first team all Pac-12. He's missed a month. What do they get back with Scott in the middle? Well, he's one of the best defensive players in the entire Pac-12. We're going to take a look at him. He is guarding David Kravish, and he's going to leave Kravish and come over. And, boy, it's so nice to have a 6'11 center who's smart like Josh Scott and can protect the basket like he can. And then they get out in the open court and they have more space to work with. So during those times when he was out, and they were struggling as a basketball team. It was just as much on the defensive end as it was his scoring. He had just 13 points and seven rebounds, but defensively, he is their anchor. As good as Wesley Gordon is, Josh Scott is the smartest, most intelligent player on the defensive end that this team has. Now Scott had back issues. Those really flared up in the conference opener here at home against UCLA. Went through shoot around that day before the game against the Bruins, but then it was a scratch. But Tad Boyle happy to have him back, no doubt. Bears back on top now. Also, as Wallace backs them both, he'll get a breather. Matthews back on the floor. Matthews averaging a team best 17 points in conference play. Casey, how is it that some guys are able to kind of step it up once the games really start to matter? Boy, he's got a jump shot that, you know, is one of the best in the conference. And when you have a guard who people have to, you know, extend to all the way to 22 feet, it makes it so much easier for a guy like Jordan Matthews to create space and use those hard closeouts to get to the basket. And they also do a nice job of running him off screens and looking for him. They know that he's their best three-point shooter, so they're going to run some action and get him off baseline screens. Fourth best of the Pac-12. About 44% as the Buffs turn it over on there and give it right back to Cal. Here he comes right now. Trying to free him up. Hopkins a long defender right there on the wing. Singer trying to direct some traffic. Instead gets the high screen from Kravis trying to set up the pick and roll. Bird, the quick launch. Hopkins, boy, can he leave the ground? Well, he's tied up for that rebound. I already talked about watching him grab rebounds and go the other way. What a luxury it is to have a guy that athletic that can also handle the ball in the open court. Hooker with four points, trying to get six, not this time around. Matthews pushing. We got a mismatch with Josh Scott guarding Jordan Matthews, but he gave it up. Ravish with Gordon Sand right there, short on the jumper. And Hopkins has been pulling down just about every rebound. Xavier Johnson wide open. The left-handed three rattles out. Singer trying to get free up top. And one of the good things about this Colorado team is their athleticism and their versatility on defense. They can switch almost any situation, dribble handoffs or ball screens. 
Makes it difficult to run your normal motion set. Kravish underneath, knocked away by Scott. Johnson recovers. Johnson lowering his shoulder against Kravish. Loose ball. Singer scoops it up. No numbers behind the back. As Matthews on the wing for the three. Matthews red hot. Don't want to get him going. No, you don't want to get him going at all. But let's credit Sam Singer for the behind the back dribble, getting two feet in the paint, and then knowing exactly where he wanted to go. He wanted to draw two defenders to get Jordan Matthews open. Matthews a game high eight points now. Scott looking down low for Gordon. Scott's second deep two of the night. He's missed them both. They're going to give Josh Scott that shot all night if he wants it. Surprised he's not going down low in the post. There's Tarwata for the three, and he buries it on his end. Back-to-back -back threes by the Bears. First Matthews, now Tarwater. 8-0 run for Cal. It's been the three-point shot that has gotten Cal this lead. They're such a confident group. I did a game, you know, early in their conference season. They looked nothing like this. Their offensive ball movement was stagnant, and their defensive energy was poor. Booker trying to counter with a three of his own. High carom, and Tarwater rips it down. The Bears four for seven from downtown. Keep in mind, in their last game, the two-point win against UCLA, the Golden Bears heaved up 26 three-pointers. They buried nine of them. Matthews trying to get free. Hopkins left hand gets in the way. Loose ball. How about Josh Scott? There we go. That'll get him going. Forget the 17 footers. Just steal the ball and dunk it uncontested. First field goal for the Buffs since the 9.38 mark. Singer weaving to Tarwater. Puts up another three. This time it's short. And Sam Singer, number two for Cal, is getting into the paint basically whenever he wants to. Half court transition anywhere. Josh Scott trying to tuck and run. Can't put it through. Loose ball. Xavier Johnson gets his own try to finish. Hopkins underneath. That was a four-on-two offensive rebounding drill right there. You had four white shirts. Tarwater and David Kravish had no chance to get that rebound. This play starting to come alive a little bit. Buffs down by three now. Singer, the quick three launch. And the Bears have been on fire from downtown. That's their fifth three-pointer. They're five for nine. Booker, the quick pass there to Scott. He's fouled by Kravish from behind. And Scott, who's had those back issues, takes a hard fall but looks to be fine. Casey, how many times do you see this? A 6'11 big man intercepting the pass on top of the arc and taking it the other way. Oh, it's a welcome sight for Tad Boyer. They've really needed some offensive production and no better offensive shots than that. Fun one so far here in Boulder, the Bears by six. And Casey, so far tonight, is Kia Booker not quite himself? One for six, four points, half of those coming for the free throw line as we look back at that hit pointer injury that made him miss the last yeah. game against Utah. I think his hip's still bugging him from this nasty collision. He and Nikola Yavanovic collide, and you can see immediately he holds his hip. Well, he stayed in this game, ends up scoring a career high 43 points, including 18 or 19 in the overtimes. But when I'm watching, Watching him move today, he's one for six from the field. He doesn't look like himself. He's not getting quite the same lift. I'm not trying to make excuses for him, but I've seen Eskia Booker play many times this year. He looks to be hurting. As you can see, he's sitting right now. Booker has been one of the best scorers, not just in the Pac-12, but in the entire nation so far as Scott gets a trip to the line. Josh Scott from Monument, Colorado, just about 80 miles south of where we are here tonight in Boulder. Put on 20 pounds of muscle since coming to college. His freshman year really pushed around. And Casey, you talk about a guy making the jump freshman year to sophomore year and how important that is. Josh Scott is a poster boy of somebody who's been able to do that. Well, I think the most important de developmental time for a college basketball player is that leap forward from your freshman to your sophomore year. As a freshman, you don't really know what's going on. It's the first time you played against elite competition, first time you've been on a weight program, you know, a good weight regimen. So 
I give freshmen a lot of leash, but when you're a sophomore, you got to make that leap forward, and your game's got to grow in your confidence as well. Whistled underneath. And speaking of sophomores, there's one of them right there. This Colorado basketball team has three of them that had solid freshman years, and Tad Boyle is looking for them to grow. And here you see Thomas with two feet, definitely outside the restricted area. An easy call for the official, but Tad Boyle is really looking at his sophomores. John Hopkins, Treshawn Fletcher, and right there, Dustin Thomas. He needs more from them. He needs some more growth. Buffs have made just two of the last ten field goal tries. Miller through traffic, off the glass. But I like what I've seen from Torrey Miller early thus far. He's been very aggressive. Every time he's caught the ball, he hasn't been looking to pass at all. He's gotten his eyes right up on the rim, and that time a power dribble and a nice finish. Bird trying to get something going. He has been held without a bucket of this one tonight. Fletcher with the foul up top, his second. I'll call him number 13, Justin Thomas. This has been a night of three-point shooting so far the first half for Cal. They've hit five three-pointers. They've hit four from within the arc. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. They're, they're not shooting the ball well overall, but when you make threes, it kind of, it's like camouflage. It covers up all your offensive shooting woes. Kravish, the three. A little out of his range. Fletcher rips it down. Here comes Collier. Kravish trying to join in the three-point party, getting a little greedy, though. Collier with the spin and the finish. And Dom Collier is coming off his best game, offensive game of the season against Utah. He was one of the lone bright spots for them, a career-high 11 points. And Tad Boyle really likes his ability to break down defenses, and you saw it right there. Gave him the start tonight. Buffs within one. Under 90 seconds left, first half. Wallace penetrating, floater off the glass, good take there. That's the first two-pointer for the Bears since nearly the 10-minute mark. A beautiful take by Tyrone Wallace, and if you're Colorado's defense, you have to show hard. I mean, come out and stop. Put your chest in front of Tyrone Wallace and say, you're not driving the ball right to the rim today. One Fletcher, offensive foul. For Trayshawn Fletcher, that is his third foul. We take a look at right here, Trayshawn Fletcher predetermined what he was going to do. Instead of reading the defense, because if he had his head up, he would have realized that there were two Cal defenders waiting for him at the basket. Instead of moving the basketball, he forced it and he picks up his third. Trying to go baseline, gives it up to Kravish. Not a foul there, a little bit of a mismatch. You got Miller on Wallace. Yeah, I was just talking about the versatility of Colorado's defense and how they switch dribble handoffs and, and dribble ball screens. And right here, Torrey Miller, he's not as comfortable as some of the other guys that I've mentioned. And right there, Tyrone Wallace took advantage of that. Fresh 35. Tenths of a second between the game clock and the shot clock. Xavier Johnson picks it off. Skip pass. Scott gathers. Fouled. He'll shoot two. Well, Scott would love to have that one back. And, you know, he's rusty. And he'll admit it. He says, I'm out of shape. I'm rusty. This is a shot that Josh Scott makes almost every time in the open court. Now, you bring up a good point. As Josh Scott was very open with saying that missing a month, he needs to get back in shape and how that might affect him. Wallace flips back in. It's Megan Matthews, rather. Buffs down by one. Under 30 seconds, first half. Bears could play for the last shot. It was Wallace who had the last shot for the win against USC. True freshman, Don Collier on Wallace, one of the best guards of the Pac-12. Five seconds, the crossover, floater in the lane. 
Johnson the rebound, and that'll do it for the first half. 28-27. This has been a back and forth half number one. This series all time tied up 12 apiece. The home team winning every single regular season meeting. We'll see how the second half goes from Boulder. We'll send you back to Los Angeles at the halftime right after this. After 20 minutes of play, a tight one in Boulder. The Golden Bears with a one-point lead into the break. Welcome inside the Fox Sports 1 newsroom. I'm Ryan Field here with this College Hoops halftime update. We'll get you back out to the Coors Event Center shortly. But first, here's a look at some other action going on around the country this Thursday evening. Staying in the Pac-12, Stanford at number 11, Utah early. Here's Marcus Allen with the steal. And when you steal something, you better run. Takes it in for the two. Cardinal up by two later in the half. In transition, Burkott Chapman bottoms up from downtown. Utah up by six at the break. Meantime, Gonzaga playing host to Loyola Marymount. All zags early in this one. Kevin Pangos, thievery, finds Byron Wesley and he's fouled. Gonzaga up nine later in the half. Now an 18 to nothing lead. Yeah, 18 to nothing. Silas Melson adding to that. Gonzaga started the game on a 20 to nothing run. Right now it's 38-11 late in the first half. Deep in the heart of Texas, Houston, SMU. Nick Moore on the drive for the Mustangs. Gets the friendly bounce. Larry Brown hoping his guys play the game the right way later in the half. SMU up five. Cannon Cunningham. Showing you how to finish in transition. SMU up seven at that point. They now have a four-point lead late in the first half. In the Big Ten, Gophers and Hawkeyes. Late in the game, Minnesota up five. Off the inbounds, Jared Utoff with the steal. Then finds Aaron White for the dunk. Hawkeyes within three. Carver Hawkeye going bananas. Now under 20 seconds left. Still a three-point game. Mike Gazelle on the drive, but he's stripped by Maurice Walker. Minnesota hangs on to get a nice road win, 64-59. Man in the SEC, Ole Miss and Florida. If this were football, it'd be great, but instead it's hoops under 10 seconds to play. Stephon Moody in a good Moody. Hits the clutch three, puts the Rebels up by one. So just 2.7 seconds left. Billy Donovan, what you got? Drawing up the play. Jacob Kurtz with the heave, but uh-uh. Rebels steal one in Gainesville. They get the W, 62-61. Hey, Saturday, it's the Big East battle when Xavier hosts St. John's. Then we head west for a Pac-12 showdown as Oregon visits UCLA at Pauley Pavilion. Our coverage starts at noon Eastern, only on Fox. That'll do it for us here in Los Angeles. We'll send it back out to Aaron Goldsmith and Casey Jacobson in Boulder. Second half coming now there's a Buffalo around every corner, and for good reason here in Boulder. Beautiful night in Boulder, Colorado. Glad to have you with us in a great first half as Cal leads by a point over the Buffs. Welcome courtside once again. Coors Event Center, Aaron Goldsmith, Casey Jacobson, and Casey for the Buffs. Nine different players have scored at least a point for Tad Boyle in the first half. Meanwhile, for Cal, the first half, the story of the long ball. It absolutely was the story for Cal offensively, three-point shooting. Now, neither team is shooting that well overall, but it's been Cal's effectiveness behind the three-point line, which is why they're up one and these next three clips are the three guys that hit game winners tyrone wallace at usc dwight tarwater he hit one at ucla and here's sam singer he hit one for the university of washington so those guys are as confident as they could be right now meanwhile for the buffs how grateful are they to have josh scott back and really looking very healthy especially grateful to have him back on the defensive side he looks so much better than he did a night uh, a couple nights ago against utah and they are so happy to have him back and yes his 13 points per game average are nice, but it's defensively where they need him the most. And tonight he's been all over the court, even right here, getting in the passing lane and dunking. Right now in the first half, he's got three points and a steal, although he's only shooting one for five from the field. So I expect them to go and get him the ball down low offensively, get his offense going too. In case you said at the top of the broadcast, you'll be interested to know which Cal Bear will have the chance to make the game-winning shot. And at this pace, it certainly looks like it. At times a frantic first half, but a, a good first half nevertheless. A very close game. Both these teams are
they're playing hard defensively and offensively. You mentioned, uh, to me, it's Jordan Matthews is the only guy in their starting five that seems to have not hit a game-winning three points, so maybe it's his night tonight. And worth noting, Jabari Bird has not scored at all in the first half. We'll step aside. We're back here with the rest. And then the second half, right after this for Boulder. Sunday. It's a College Hoops doubleheader on Fox Sports 1. First, Chase and Randall lead Stanford against Colorado. Then, the seventh-ranked Arizona Wildcats bring their A game to Washington State. For the fifth straight game, the Cal Bears have taken the lead into halftime. 28-27 at our break point, moments away from the second half. Casey, now as we take a look at the AT&T fast analysis from half number one, what stands out to you the most here? Well, we already talked about Cal's three-point shooting, but I want you to look at these numbers right here for Colorado. Well, they've done a very nice job going inside and getting 18 combined points of their 27 inside the paint. They've only made one perimeter shot. They're going to need the three if they're going to be just Cal team. You see the Buffs barely shooting 30% from the field. That's exactly what they shot 30% in their recent loss to Utah. Good to see a familiar face and a friend of the program, to say the least. Spencer Dinwiddie, who made the jump to the NBA with Detroit, back here during the All-Star break. Casey and, well, the fan club, as you can see, it spans all generations for Spencer Dinwiddie. Yeah, a lot of love out here in Boulder for Spencer Dinwiddie. And I think <laughs> Tad Boyle's wondering if they got an extra jersey in the, in the closet back there and they could put it out. They're saying, Get him Spencer, out here, man. why'd you go? Seriously. Spencer, come back. We I want was, you back. I was surprised that he went, to be honest. You know, a guy who wasn't guaranteed to be a first-round draft pick. Now, Spencer Dinwiddie was very talented. I'm not saying that, but he just come off an ACL injury, and he wasn't guaranteed to be, to be a first-round draft pick. I was surprised to see him leave this beautiful place. Dinwiddie's such a big part of what Tad Boyle has done here during his four-plus years in Boulder. Xavier Johnson fouled. He'll shoot. That time on Kravish. His second. And I like the decision on the offensive end to run your first play for Xavier Johnson, who has really been struggling from the field. And in the first half, he was only one for six. So get him on the low block, even though he didn't make it. And he's not making his free throws either. I was just about to comment that when you're struggling, not only is it good to get an inside touch, I mean, that helps. But it's best to go to the free throw line because it's a 15-foot uncontested jump shot. Missed them both. And a quick whistle. One time on Wesley Gordon, his first foul. First foul on a buff starter tonight. That form from... Xavier Johnson didn't even look all that confident on that second free throw. He didn't look comfortable at all, and he has a nice shooting stroke, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Nice slash, third block of the night for Josh Scott, as he meets Matthews with a rude hello. Well, he's just been a monster from the onset of this game on the defensive end of the court. And when you have a defensive guy who guys are wondering, all right, should I drive it? Because Josh Scott is likely going to throw this ball into the second row. It changes everything. I mean, we talked about it with Washington is a perfect example. They lose the best shot blocker in the country in Robert Upshaw, and now they can't stop anybody on the defensive end. They're really struggling. So having Josh Scott back is so key for Tad Boyle's club. Officials taking a look at the time of the shot clock, which they've gotten right, 21 seconds. Wallace to Kravish upstairs, can't hold on. I like the execution of that play. I thought David Kravish at least, probably couldn't have dunked it, but at least come down with it and then go back up. Bird a quick three. He's been held scoreless so far tonight. Tarwater, the offensive rebound, a fresh 35. He'll heave it up from the corner. Once the Gorda puts his long arms up. Gordon had nearly a triple-double in the conference opener against UCLA. Puts it on the floor. Nice skip pass. Booker off the glass. What an intelligent cut by Asia Booker. Instead of just standing and watching Wesley Gordon go one-on-one -on -one against Dwight Tarwater, he continues to move and then breaks at the perfect second on the baseline for that cut. Matthews, the three. 
He is the one guy that you have to mark on this Cal Bear team. And we've talked about their three-point shooting, and they're a very confident bunch. But the best guy, the most consistent shooter, is Jordan Matthews. 44% from downtown, one of the best in the conference. Collier, the teardrop. Scott underneath, offensive rebound. Tells through. And he got his first offensive points the other night against Utah on the offensive glass. He's one of the best in the Pac-12 in that area. He's so long, and he also is so smart. He understands he's not a great leaper, but he uses his body well. Bird 0 for 3 from the floor. Looking for his first bucket tonight. And Xavier Johnson's basically daring him to shoot that three-point shot. You don't see that very often from guys guarding Jabari Bird. Under 10 to shoot. Scott almost knocks it free. Five to shoot. Matthews puts it up. Long reach of Scott. And he drains it. What a shooter Jordan Matthews is. And a huge mistake defensively by Colorado. Under five seconds on the shot clock. Get a hand up. Matthews 11 points. And he has a rebound here. Funny, Casey, how sometimes you put that long arm up, that trajectory gets even better. That's a good point. As a shooter, you know, sometimes when people would hard close, I'd, I'd lift it up a little bit more. You're right. And when you feel the defensive pressure coming on, you concentrate just a little bit more in order to make that shot. I'm calling your whistle for his first foul. Call your somebody the mini. Around Boulder, he is the point guard of the future for the Buffs. Of course, the Skia Booker, a senior now, only senior on the roster. Okoro now on the floor. You can't miss him. It's seven foot one. Last touch by the Buffs off Collier stays with the Bears. And Kingsley Okoro, seven one from England, and Coach Conzo Martin is very high on him. He's his first recruit as the head coach at Cal as Xavier Johnson commits the cardinal sin and fouling a jump shooter. And we've been talking about Jabari Bird and how he struggled. We saw him on the previous possession turn down an open three, and that might be the first time I've ever seen him do that. And now Xavier Johnson fouls him on a two-point shot. And just what we talked about on the other end, Jabari Bird's going to be able to get into rhythm if he can knock down a couple of free throws. His first points, and you can see the differences for this Cal team when Jabari Bird is in the lineup and not, of course, missed about 10 games with that foot injury. But it goes, Casey, so much deeper than just the points, isn't it? It does. I mean, it, their offense is so much harder to guard with just him being out there. He doesn't even have to shoot well, but the threat of him scoring opens up driving lanes for Tyrone Walls, and it discourages guys from double-teaming David Kravish. But let me also say this, Aaron, I think the addition of Dwight Tarwater at the forward oh, position has also helped this Cal Bear offense. So not only Jabari Bird, but Dwight Tarwar helping to spread out the defense, bring big guys away from the hoop. And Bird gets whistled there for the foul. Johnson slicing through the lane. Front iron, tip in good. Wesley Gordon there to clean things up. Oh, he's so long. I mean, you have to really root him out of space in order to get him off the offensive glass because even if you just put a body on him, it's not good enough. He's so long, he can literally just jump over the top of you. Bird was looking for Okoro down low. Here comes Singer, the floater, not close. And Aaron, do you see how Sam Singer changed that shot because he saw Josh Scott coming? That's what having a great shot blocker will do for your team. Goes to the Buffaloes. Bird gets a breather. Wallace back on the floor now. Well, you, you mentioned the Washington Huskies from earlier this year. That's exactly what we saw when the Huskies were playing. Having a shot blocker on the team like changes psychologically how teams play. They don't want to go in there. No one likes to get their shot blocked. It's embarrassing. Upshot changed everything for the Huskies as Booker puts up the two and a foul underneath. Gordon went bounding for the rebound. But Tarwater whistled for the foul his second. And Dwight Tarwater was doing the best that he could on that possession. The shot goes up. He knew that Wesley Gordon had just gotten an offensive rebound on the previous possession. So he's like, Coach, I got you. I'm not going to let him get to the offensive glass, but he fouled him instead. A lot of size on the floor right now for the Buffs in Johnson and Scott and in Gordon. You've got the two guards in Collier and in Booker. Scott puts it on the floor against El Coro. And Travis was there to greet him. 
Matthews wide, wide open, and that just can't happen if you're Chad Boyle's Buffalo. That's too easy. You said it. There was not a Buffalo defender within a 10-foot radius of one of the best shooters in Pac-12 right now. That literally cannot happen if you're a, if you want to call yourself a good defensive team. You got to communicate when you're getting back in transition. Well, Matthews dialed in. He's three for three from downtown. Scott trying to set up the pick and roll. Tend to shoot. Johnson foot on the line, short. Okoro the rebound. Cal looking to lengthen the lead here. The Kravish. Gordon right behind him. This was a matchup that we saw early in the game, and Kravish wins this time around. He's not a powerful post player, but he has great jump hooks to either hand, and he also has a nice turnaround jump shot. He can score in the post. Block, foul underneath on Wallace. That's his third. Gordon Matthews, 14 points, three for three from deep. He's the only player on either side in double digits so far tonight. In 23 years of NASCAR racing, number 24 has become a legend. Catch the legend in his last ride at the Daytona 500 on Fox. Tomorrow, do you have what it takes? to be a Kingsman. Welcome to the most dangerous job in the world. If you're prepared to adapt, then transform. Like a spy. Of sorts. Critics are calling Kingsman unlike anything you've ever seen. As regular season title races heat up, four contenders will clash in a Saturday doubleheader. St. John Xavier, Saturday at noon, followed by Oregon UCLA at three on Fox. And a huge defensive miscommunication has cost the Colorado Buffalo defense. Right here as we look, two guys are guarding Sam Singer. So who's the guy that's open? Not only one of the best three-point shooters in the Pac-12, but also the country, Jordan Matthews. If you're going to be a good defensive team and you're in transition, you need to be pointing and talking to who you have. Well, I don't know if, if it was Xavier Johnson's man or Wesley Gordon's man. It doesn't matter. You cannot. You have to protect the basket first, but then you have to identify the best shooters on the team. And some teams, KC as we know in today's college basketball, are built on transfers, new players playing together for the first time. But this is the Bucks team. This is a core group of guys who have been together for a while. Never mind where we are on the calendar. A lot of games have been played already. This is a team, Colorado, that has made the NCAA tournament three years in a row. They lost Spencer Dinwiddie to an injury last year, but basically returned that entire roster minus Dinwiddie. So your point is well taken. They, they don't have excuses. These guys have NCAA tournament experience, Pac-12 big game experience, and you can see the look on that Tad's face says it all. There's no doubt. Cal with its biggest league so far tonight. After that, Matthews three-pointer. Hand off to Wallace, cut off. Rising for his fourth, this time he finally misses. And that was a late contest by Askia Booker, a senior, he's gotta know better. Although Jordan Matthews missed that, it wasn't because of Askia Booker's defense. Johnson finds himself underneath, Wiggles in for two. Oh, and he really needed that bucket to get himself going. That's only his second basket of the game. And we already talked about how important he is. He, When he's healthy and locked in offensively, he's a matchup nightmare. Cal had a 10-2 run before that bucket. Wallace the floater, what a pretty take that was. And folks, he is a left-handed player who really prefers to drive right, and he finished with a right-handed floater. He makes it look like he's a right-handed player. Oh, he's so right. good at it. Meanwhile, on the other end, Booker trying to counter. Singer pushing behind the back. Collier in his way. Put back good and through. How about that secondary effort? Matthews getting it done downtown and also underneath the rim. Well, I love the effort 
and never assume, this is what coaches always tell you, never assume that a player is going to make a one-on-one -on -one trip to the basket or even a breakaway. Continue, make the extra effort, and right there, it paid off for Cal and for Jordan Matthews. Believe it or not, first second chance points for Cal all night. Jordan up and under, nice hang time. Oh, we're going up and down here. Not a lot of defense being played. Buckets on each end, and I love the athletic and creativity of Wesley Gordon. What a pretty pass, Wallace. Kravish to finish. This looks like a street ball game right now. Both teams are scoring at the rim whenever they want to. NBA All-Star break, maybe the All-Star hey, game taking hey, over here a little bit. I like it. I just know that these coaches aren't very happy with the defensive effort. It's oh, so interesting talking about that. We were speaking with Conzo Martin, first-year head coach for Cal, coming over from the SEC, asking him about the differences between the SEC, the Big Ten where he played, and now the Pac-12. And he said the grinded-out style in the SEC completely different than what you see the offense at times in the Pac-12. And I don't like that grinded-out style of the SEC and the Big Ten. I'm just going to be honest with you. I feel like college basketball in general needs to pick up the pace. And that's why I love watching Pac-12 basketball. I see a lot of teams that want to play up-tempo with the exception of Oregon State, of course. That's right. And it, it, it has worked, hasn't it? It has. It has worked. Let's give them all the credit in the world. They, you know, they looked at their roster and knew that the only way that they can really be successful was to grind teams out on the defensive end of the court. So, I, you know, I don't want people to think that I don't like defense. Booker, 360 spin, puts it up too strong. Booker, we were talking earlier, just has not looked quite right tonight. He hasn't in any movement. And he's talking to himself right now. He's gutting it out. I mean, he's making an effort out here. Third foul on Okoro. Booker, two for 11 from the floor. Dalton trying to take on Bird. Kicks out. And can't find his man, Dustin Thomas. Matthews comes back in. Gives Sam Singer a spell. Ten-point margin for Cal. I'm surprised Jordan Matthews was even out at all. The way he's been playing and carrying the load for this Cal offense, I feel like... What's the reason for taking him out? Matthews, 11 points here in the second half. Four for six from the floor. Wallace, a hard take. Too hard, in fact. Goes the other way. Josh Scott is the best defensive player on this court without question. He seems to be in the right place at the right time defensively, either for a shot block opportunity or a charge like that. I loved, and I had, I had the honor and privilege of playing with a ton of really good big men during my career at Stanford. Mark Madsen, Jason Collins, Jaron Collins. When you play with a smart big man who knows angles and defense, oh, it makes the game so much easier. And a result of the third foul on Wallace. Booker, step back off the dribble. He gives it up to Quiet. Minus tonight. Spin move, Thomas, right hand finish. Love the move. Thomas is 6'7", versatile offensive player. I mentioned he's averaging eight points over his last four games. So he's been better and more aggressive offensively, and that was a great example. Bird with two points, both coming from the strike. Kravish fighting for position down low. Scott fronted him. Wallace with nine. Three fouls to boot. He pulls up, trying to find double digits. Hopkins, another rebound. That's his seventh. Free throw line, pull up. Bird pulls it down. And Josh Scott was running the floor right there, and he was pointing to the sky, telling Jerron Hopkins that he wanted the lob on that possession, and Hopkins takes the shot instead. That's one of those ones where you got to make it. And if you make it, then, then Josh Scott puts his finger down. But <laughs> when you miss it, he's like, come on, man, give me the ball. That's right. Look around, Matthews. Off the dribble. Kick out. Tarwater, three, dials it up. And Jordan Matthews draws almost three defenders, it seemed like to me, on that one possession to get Dwight Tarwater a wide open three. This California team is really shooting the ball in rhythm, so confident. They're nine for 17 from deep. Pulled up by Talton. And he matches it on the other end. Talton's first bucket tonight. Talton's one of those rare guards.
who shoots it better from three than he does from two. He's very comfortable out there on the perimeter when he gets in. When he gets in close, he's a little bit small and unsure of himself. Bird plants, kicks, another three, rattles out, no foul call. Tarwater put it up. Booker weaving through, trying to keep his feet, barely does. Holding ball pass, down to Scott, off the glass. That's a textbook post-entry pass from Xavier Tom to Josh Scott. If you're a guard, and your big guy showing you the hand, and he's got low position. You got to be able to get it to him. Tom did a great job on that pass. Buffs within six. Head fake. Matthews kick out. Wallace another three, and the cards no. Hopkins eighth rebound. Stripped and a foul. What a second half this one's turning out to be. The Buffs trying to hang in there, trying to avoid back-to-back -back oh, no. losses for the first time under Chad Boyle. Meanwhile, Cal with nine three-pointers, nine for 18 from behind the arc. Saturday, the Big East returns to Fox Sports 1 as Marquette squares off against Creighton. 12.30 p.m. the start time, Eastern time, right here on Fox Sports 1, streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Aaron Goldsmith, Casey Jacobson, and Casey, how about the first assist tonight from Xavier Talton? This was a beauty. I love fundamentals, and this is how you make a post-entry pass from the top of the key. Keep it low with your left hand and hit the guy right in the hand where he's showing you. Even though Josh got bobbled that pass, that was perfect execution of a low post entry pass by Xavier Talton. And you can see Scott keeping warm. Missed a month with back spasms. And we have seen tonight, offensively, defensively, heck, he even got the steal and ran it back in transition for the flush. How big of a reason that he has been for keeping the Buffs in this ballgame right now. He's been invaluable, really. I mean, he's not having a great offensive game, although he's scoring the ball and getting to the free throw line. And we talked about it at halftime. His value for this team defensively, which without him, they were a below average Pac-12 defensive team because only Wesley Gordon was the guy that would protect the rim. He's still young. He's still developing. They need Josh Scott. Hopkins gets the first, misses the second. Offensive rebound. Thomas backing down low. And he's fouled. Charwater's third. I really like the game that Dustin Thomas has put in thus far. He's been active on both ends of the court. And right there, there is a mismatch. Dustin Thomas against Dwight Tarwater down low. And give that foul to Sam Singer instead. So Tarwater stays with two, but Singer, as you can see, leaving the floor right now, he has four. Kravish comes in, along with Wallace. And Conzo Martin has recognized that Colorado wants to attack Dwight Tarwater in the post, and that's why he brings in David Kravish, who's now playing the four position, and Kingsley O'Cole at the five. Bucks now a 7-0 run. Kravish spin around. Wesley Gordon gets a piece. O'Coro gets it knocked away. Bird scoops it up. Matthews, will he hit another? Wide open, too strong. Finally, rebound there from Gordon as Hopkins brings it across. Okoro lurking as Hopkins kicks out. Fletcher finds the baseline. Now finds Hopkins. Quick ball movement here. This possession for the Buffs. And none of these guys are really comfortable shooting from three. Off the glass. Gordon tries to put it back. Awkward angle. Almost got tied up a little bit. Wallace, no numbers, wants to take it, and he's fouled. I mean, that was close to being a goaltend right there by Wes Gordon. I don't know if the officials saw that or not. That ball looked like, to me, it was going down. As we see Tyrone Wallace, nice way to avoid the charge. And Wes Gordon comes in and does get a fingertip on that. That was close. Could have gone either way. Dalton Wizard for the foul, his first. Now, this has really been the one Achilles heel this year, Casey, for Wallace at the free throw line, shooting under 
He gets there a ton, and he's a pretty good shooter, so there's really no excuse there. Coming into the game, he was 5 for 14 in his last two games. It hasn't cost the Bears because of the heroics it, at the end of the game. It has helped to set up the heroics probably a little bit. No, you're right, but, I mean, had they lost those games, he would be really upset with himself for leaving those empty points on the free throw line. Under eight minutes to play. Five to shoot. Thomas puts it up. Wallace, the rebound. Kravish quickly front court. Gets the fake. Gets stripped. Here comes Hopkins. One on two. What a great job by Cal defensively to get back. That's usually where Jerron Hopkins goes to work in the open court. Wesley Gordon, you don't normally see him take one from that deep. It was open. Well, the lineup that Colorado has right now, their strength is not outside shooting. They want to get to the basket. Remember, Booker only six points, two for 11. That's Kravish able to put it back. Where's the defensive help for Colorado? Right there, Kravish getting the offensive glass, but it looked like a couple of the Colorado Buffalo players were leaking out on the break a little too early. And we have a whole line change coming for Tad Boyle. Three pending substitutions to bring Scott, Xavier Johnson, and Booker back in. Back door, Fletcher the pull up. Hopkins another rebound. Last touch by Hopkins. You can't believe it. Looked like the right call as it goes back to the Bears. Bus trash. Stay thirsty, my friends. A lot of celebrities on hand for this one tonight. Bill McCartney, you see right there, legendary football coach here in Boulder. Meanwhile, C.J. Anderson, a former Golden Bear, breakout running back for the Broncos. Notice he did not bring Peyton along tonight, however. Spencer Dinwiddie, we saw him earlier. One of the best players under Chad Boyle, all pack 12. Second round pick by the Pistons. He's on hand for this one tonight. And Casey, without Spencer Dinwiddie, this team, as we knew it would be, it's a much different lineup without a guy who can do as much as Spencer Dinwiddie did. Yeah, they've really struggled, but I've been surprised. Since he went down, Colorado's right record, as you see there, is below 500. 20 wins and 21 losses. So what does that tell me? That not only was Dinwiddie a great player, they miss his production, but he was their leader. And it's just another example to me how important leadership is in a locker room because this team is really searching to fill that void ever since he got injured. Yeah, there's no doubt. Bears with nine three-pointers in this one tonight. That's one shy of tying a season-high 10. They dropped in the non-conference schedule against Alcorn State. Under 10 to shoot. Okora well out of his range. Not for Matthews, though. He'll rise and fire, and he buries another. Aaron, I do not understand what's going through a ski of Booker's mind right now. He puts his hand up after the shot's already released. That's not good enough for a player like Jordan Matthews. Your hand has got to be up before he even catches the ball. That's really, game. I'm baffled. That's a game high 19 for Matthews. Scott counters with two on the other end. And a nice move by Scott. They need more of that. But if they're going to exchange three-point shots for two-point shots, Buffalo, the Buffaloes aren't going to win this game. Try to get it down low, but a foul. Uh, that looks like it's going against Thomas. His second. So now 10 three-pointers for the Golden Bears. 10 for 21. The most three-pointers that the Buffaloes have given up this year is 13 as Wallace finds a seam and exploits it. And another right-handed finish. He's so good using that offhand. He actually prefers it right there. He splits two guys and off-balance right-handed finish. He's got 12 now. Well, the trio we talked about at the beginning, as Johnson gets it stripped, he wants a foul, won't get it. The trio, Casey of Booker, Johnson, and Scott, they've combined to go eight for 29 now from the field. And Josh Scott with the majority of those baskets, really Booker and Xavier Johnson haven't given Colorado much at all offensively. Fletcher wants it on the other end, but the Bears quickly race back. Under five minutes to play. Booker taking it, fouled, and it counts. 
And that's more like it. His hips look pretty healthy on that one. And what I like about this play is Booker anticipates the contact. We're going to take another look. Watch him. He knows the help is coming. He sees David Kravish. He puts his shoulder right into his chest and finishes. Beautiful play by Booker. Now worth noting that's four fouls now on Kravish. Singer also has four. Not much foul trouble for the Buffs, but the same cannot be said for the Bears. Well, this Buffalo team is a lot deeper than Cal. Cal usually only plays seven, maybe eight deep. So that's a good point. Foul trouble is a lot more of an issue for Cal than it will ever be for Colorado. Booker can't convert the three-point play, but he does bring Colorado within eight. Okoro able to regain and a double dribble. And I know that Kingsley Okoro is going to be charged with the time uh, with the turnover, excuse me. But Jabari Bird, I think, deserves a half of a turnover. You can't throw the ball to your rolling big guy. He's not comfortable catching in that position. directing some traffic. Wallace trying to get him to go left. Tend to shoot off the glass. Left hand finish there by Dustin Thomas. Dustin Thomas has been their most consistent scorer, especially driving to the basket. I felt like he could have taken that three-point shot, but wisely turned it down for a better opportunity at the basket. I like his activity today. Brings the box within six. Wallace trying to create some space. He's fouled. He tries to take it the whole way as that goes on Hopkins. Well, it was against USC, the second conference game of the season, when Dustin Thomas dropped a career high 17. He's got 18. After the game on Fox Sports Live, we all know Kentucky's undefeated, but another top five team looked to continue its own impressive win streak. On Loss. Nine NHL games in action, but it's a play from the KHL. That you've got to see. KHL, it's still around. We're going back to Aaron and Casey in beautiful Boulder. All right, gentlemen, you got that right. Thank you so much. Casey, we have seen the Bears exploit the three-point line. 10 for 21. They're shooting nearly 50%. And a big reason why Jordan Matthews. Break down this defense for us. Well, if you're guarding a hot shooter like Jordan Matthews and you're a skier booker, your hands have got to be up early so that he can't lock in on the rim. Skia Booker makes the effort. It's way too late, and there's no excuse. He's a senior. He should know better. Part of defense is closing that space, making the extra effort, and it really doesn't cost you a lot to have your hands up on the catch. Last two games, opponents have dropped 13 three-pointers on the bus. Meanwhile, they've countered with just three of their own. Singer back on the floor now. He's seen his playing time limited here in the second half because of four fouls. Bigger lineup right now for Cal with Kravish and Okoro. Under three and a half minutes. They feed Kravish. Gordon battling down low with them. The left hand. Nothing but that. That was beautiful. He's got a dozen. Hopkins on the other end. And a foul there on the floor. No late whistle there on David Kravish. He wasn't happy about that, but I love the post move from Kravish. We talked about him, and, you know, I'm always talking about him not being a power guy, and I think he's hearing me, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm not a power guy. Well, watch this. They can't guard me in the post and give him the left-hand hook. That's the fourth on Kingsley Okoro. So I apologize to David Kravish for not calling him a power post guy. It's proven me wrong. Take a look at how much Colorado has, well, not quite spread things around. 30 points in the paint. And the behind that free throws, you see only a couple of three-pointers. Speaking of scoring, Scott had 10 points in the previous game against Utah. Now in the Buffs' 1,000-point club. So congratulations to John Scott, the junior out of Monument, Colorado. And he's an 80% free throw shooter at the line. You don't see that a lot from big guys. So this game gets close. You can't foul him down low. He's going to make them both. Buffs now within six. And 
Gordon just gets a shoulder on Singer. Right, that's a foul. Well, this month, the best drivers in the world push themselves and their cars to the limits of the 57th running of the Great American Race. Be there as NASCAR drops the flag on another season and catch a legend's last ride as Jeff Gordon begins his final season behind the wheel. The Daytona 500 begins Sunday, February 22nd at noon Eastern, only on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. It's just mirrors. Jeff Gordon looked way too young to be retiring. Oh, he's been doing it for a long time, though, I guess. No, there's no question about that. Singer has not had many free throw tries on the season. 50%. Scott to finish! And, and the look on Josh Scott's face right now, he is wincing after that dunk. Look at his face right now. He's still hurting, but that was a nice play. Colorado getting out in transition, and they pull within five. Big with the DQ Chicken Strip Basket, now just $4.99. Colorado now is in five. Casey, tell us how it happened. I want you to watch Sam Singer, number two for California, at the line. He misses the free throw, and instead of getting back on defense, he's going to lunge forward for a steal, which allows Trace John Fletcher to get behind him, and now Colorado has a two-on-one fast break, which leads to the Josh Scott dunk. And Aaron, I know you can see the look on Josh Scott's face right there. He is wincing, does not feel good at all. I'm... I'm thinking he's regretting dunking that ball and rather, <laughs> rather just laid it up on the basket. Well, Scott's been huge, especially in the second half. Four for five, 10 of his 15 points. He's got four blocks tonight that ties a career high. That surprises me. I would think that Josh Scott would have more than four blocks in a game. Just how smart he is and how well he understands angle and his timing. Full court pressure here by Colorado. Hopkins trying to get the steal. Wallace now able to walk it across. Two and a half minutes left. Travis high screen. Gordon is there to meet Wallace and he's whistled for the foul. His last two fouls have been, maybe you can't call both of them incidental contact, but it's been pretty close. They're taking advantage of how the referees are calling this. This is the second time we've seen number one, Wesley Gordon, step out and try and help on the ball screen. And Tyron Wallace is an intelligent play. He knows the referees are going to give him that call if he dips his shoulder and attacks Gordon's hip. That's the third on Gordon. Both teams in the bonus. Wallace, a third-year starter, his first season at point. Of course, Justin Cobbs has departed to Greener Pastures, now playing overseas. Cobbs was such the emotional leader for Cal last year. I feel like he would have been kind of a Conzo Martin type of guy, new head coach for the Bears. Bucks have made four of the last five from the field. Booker rises, front iron, and a foul on the floor. And if that's on Okoro, that's five. He's gone. And that's a big development in this game. Kings of Okoro, they don't go to him offensively, but he's very key to what they do defensively. Another big body for Cows. We take another look here. As he just gets a two-arm shove in the back. And, I mean, that's significant because they don't have a lot of answers. Cal, speaking about, in the front court. They can go with Dwight Tarwater. It looks like they're going to put Jabari Bird back in the game and go small. And Bird is a storyline in this one, Casey. If you take a look at what he has done or not done offensively, two points, 0 for 3 from the floor. Both those points coming from the stripe. He's somebody, during this four-game winning streak, he's averaged about a dozen points a night for Cal. Well, we talked about how important he was for the spacing of this Cal Bear offense. He's done basically nothing for the three-point line, except the two free throws you mentioned. But everybody else is doing it for Cal. I mean, Kravish has got a couple of post-ups in the second half. We know about Jordan Matthews, how hot he's shooting. And Sam Singer, uh, he's still, I can still see the steam coming out this guy's head, man. He's hot. Tad Boyle will rest Scott, but you figure it won't be for long. Scott scored the last seven for the Buffs, and a foul right there on the end line. 
That was a very dangerous pass and an uncharacteristic decision from Tyron Wallace. And he just hit his chest and looked at Conzo Martin and said, my fault, coach. That was a, I mean, that was a 30-foot bounce pass on the baseline. Skia Booker normally gets that, but Cal's going to go to the line instead. Takes the first down on Booker. Singer, seven points so far. Six of those coming from behind the arc. Barely grazes the front iron. Could Booker start to take things over a little bit for the Buffs? Here's his nose. He's done it before. Scott back on the floor. Under two minutes now. Buffs down by five. Spin move by Scott. Gets the rim, but that's it. Never touched the rim, so it's still 10 to shoot. Bucker buries the three. What a huge shot. I'm surprised that Josh Scott even tried to attempt to dunk that ball. I mean, we already saw what happened to him last time he tried to dunk it. He's grimacing in pain. And this time it works out for the Colorado Buffalo offense. Get the ball to a ski of Booker. And regardless of whether or not he is struggling, he has so much self-confidence. And I know his teammates have a lot of confidence in him, too. He steps right into the shot. A nice closeout, nice effort by Sam Singer, but to no avail. That's his first three of the night. This is the closest we have been since we were tied at 31 early here in the second half. Booker with 11, Scott with 17. Jordan Matthews, a game high 19, including four three-pointers. That's been a big storyline tonight for the Bears. As we approach the 92nd mark. Bears by just two. They've been here before. Singer puts up the three off the mark. Rebound by Scott. His eighth rebound tonight. Hopkins a lob down low to Gordon. Trying to find his balance. Doubled up. Under a minute to play. Scott finds Travis. And I felt like on that possession, nobody for Colorado really wanted to take that shot except for Askia Booker. And he was denied, and they moved the ball around. But Josh Scott reluctantly was the one to take that one. Tyrone Wallace was the latest. This was back in Berkeley against USC. And Wallace has been one of just a handful who have made clutch game-winning shots. And here it was at home. Yeah, at Hospital Billion, you and I were on the call for this one. A huge shot coming off of a Sam Singer shot at Washington. It's a beautiful play, and they rush to court, and they almost spilled over into our broadcasting booth. I thought we were in danger for a little bit there. Last three games winning by a total of five points. And it's been a three ball each and every time. So there's just over 44 seconds to go right now. The shot clock's at 28. So Colorado is not going to foul. They're going to play out this last possession, but they need to get a stop and a rebound. The rebound is key. With the athletic, a lot of Hopkins on him, a lot of length, under 10 to shoot. Puts on the brakes, puts on the Jets, teardrop, and he buries it. What a clutch shot that was by Tyrone Wallace, using that offhand to create the space he needed. And a steal. Pointing the other way in favor of Cal timeout. We'll keep it right here. Wallace gets the floater. Booker trying to create something. Take a look at that floater again. And again to his right hand, folks. He is a left-handed shooter. Although you wouldn't tell it by the way he's played in the second half, really prefers to go to that right hand. And then just getting a, a hand on that ball. I believe that was Sam Singer. And then Tyron Wallace makes the such a smart play, getting on the floor, but then having you know the intelligence to look up the referee and immediately get a timeout.
Last year, the Buffaloes were 9-0 and at home in single-digit games. This arena, Coors Event Center, has turned into one of the best home court advantages in the conference. This year, it's been a bit of a different story. Granted, fewer games, but 2-2. Two and two. And games decided by single digits. And remember, once this one's over with, we'll send you out to Los Angeles with Fox Sports Live. 15 seconds left. Scott, quick foul on Kravish. And now it's a two-possession game, so Colorado has to foul immediately to preserve as much time as they can. They just need to pray that Cal's going to miss a free throw here and they can push the break. But they're going to have to score as soon as they can. And it doesn't matter to me. If he misses right now, it doesn't matter if it's a two or a three. You just got to get a bucket. But if he makes a couple, it's got to be a three. Casey, you were talking about how smart of a player Josh Scott is, who plays down low, very physical. That was just his first foul in this one tonight. Well, that's okay. I mean, the way he's played, it hasn't been for lack of aggression. He's been all over the place. He's been on the offense and defensive glass blocking shots. Normally, you see a guy who's that active on the defensive end pick up more than one foul right. in 40 minutes. Uh, great body control. Cal now extends the lead to six. And I would like to see, in the NBA, if you take a timeout from underneath the basket, you can advance the ball to half court. I like that rule. I, I really do. Because it, it, it rewards coaches who save their timeouts. And and it gives the advantage to the offensive team, which you know I like. Already, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't happen to like that, would you, Casey? I would. I love that it. That doesn't fit in your personality. It's fun to watch. It's really difficult to score when you have to take the ball out from underneath this basket here. It's very difficult. Chicken back in Take a glance right now at the Pac-12 standings. As we stand right now, the Bears entering tonight 15 and 9. The Buffaloes at 11 and 11. Of course, Arizona and Utah, the two ranked teams on top. Well, and it's a race at the top with Arizona and Utah, both quality basketball teams. Ten seconds left. Loose ball. Last touch. Gives it to the Bears. Two possessions, two turnovers for the Buffs. And I know what Colorado was trying to do on that possession to get Xavier Talden driving towards the baseline and then a flare screen for Skia Booker, but Tyron Wallace knew the play before it was even executed. Gordon on the quick foul there. Buffalo's on their way to losing their third straight. Meanwhile, the Bears are on the path to win their fifth in a row. And their 16th of the season. Remember, this was a Cal team that was on thin ice after beginning the season 10 and 1. They then swept the Washington schools on the road and the LA schools at home after a lengthy conference losing streak. Now they're back on the right path. This will be it for the Buffs. This season was not one they saw coming here in Boulder as Cal holds on to win its fifth in a row. And under Tad Boyle, the first time in school history that they have lost back-to-back -back games in a row. And the first time since the 09-2010 season. That'll do it for us. Final score, 68-61. Cal extends the winning streak. For all who made this one possible, I'm Aaron Goldsmith. Thanks for joining us. Right now, let's send you out to Jay and Dan. The sunny skies of L.A. Fox Sports Live starts now. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. This is your only stop for highlights in the great country of the United States of America. My name is Jay Onright. This is Dan O'Toole. You're watching a television program called Fox Sports Live. Let you know one thing. One game in the NBA. So there they got the all-star break. So they just kick it and go into one game. One game and then the break. Great matchup, though. Oh. Yeah, Cavs and Bulls. Cavs battling the Bulls in Chicago for third place in the East. Cleveland without Kevin Love. Love suffered a corneal abrasion Wednesday against the old scratchy eye. Despite Kevin Love not playing, it was a chilly one. It was uh, in <laughs> negative digits. I'd be making that face as well. On January 13th, Chicago was seven games ahead of Cleveland in the standing. Since then, the Cavs are 14-1. Bulls have gone 7-7 seven, seven first quarter. LeBron James. Got it. Got it. Okay, he lost it. The other end, Tony Snell finds Pau Gasol. Layup and the Pau Gasol finished with his 14th straight double-double.
More sloppy play from King James. LeBron loses the handle again. So Kim Noah finds Snellzy. That's Snellivision. Second quarter, LeBron. Bad pass. Aaron Brooks takes it the other way. Does not finish. Nikola Mirotic there for the tip. LeBron, five turnovers in the first half. Chicago up seven at the break. Third quarter. Derek Rose. Pagasol finds him. Reverse layup. Rose spins off the defender. Tough floater. Goes. Rose into the lane. And just before the quarter expires, gets it. Rose with 13 points in the third. Bulls up 10, head into the fourth. LeBron takes it from one end to the other. Lays it in, plus the foul. LeBron hung in the air and scooped it in. LeBron, 31 points and four assists. Moving into second, all time an assist for a forward. Bulls up 11, working around to Snell. Hits a three. He had 22 points. Filling in for the injured Jimmy Butler. Snell's he was. Under five minutes left. Bulls up 17. Rose pull-up jumper. He finished with 30 points. Chicago wins. Well, the Bulls now game and a half up on the Cavs in the Central. So the Bulls head into the All-Star break on a three-game win streak. Rose with his fourth 30-point game of the season. First ever in his career against Cleveland. LeBron leading all scorers with 31 points in the losses. The Cavs fall to one and two without Caleb in the lineup. Rose on what the win means. It means a lot, man. Um, tonight we were just trying to finish right. Uh, we won four on the road. It seemed like we had a couple of days of good practice, and tonight was all about Tony, man. He's coming to his own. He works very hard, and it's showing. Well, the Bulls returned to Chicago this week after a six-game road trip and won their first back-to-back -back home games in over a month. Chicago had lost five of its previous seven home games, shooting under 42% during that stretch. And George Carl. Sent out this tweet on Thursday. Well, I guess the word is out. Hashtag back to work. Yes, with that tweet, George Carl confirmed what Fox Sports 1 NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski first reported. Carl is the new head coach of the Sacramento Kings. And Sacramento Carl joins the sixth NBA franchise as head coach. Most recently, a nine-year stretch with Denver from 05 to 2013. During that time, he led the Nuggets to the playoffs every season and earned his only NBA Coach of the Year award in 2013. He brings a career coaching record of over 1,100 wins and just over 750 losses. He takes over the Kings with 30 games left in the season. If Sacramento wins at least 15 more the rest of the way, it would extend Carl's incredible streak of 21 consecutive seasons at 500 or better. The longest streak by any head coach in the association's history. Carmelo Anthony hinted Thursday that it's, quote, very likely he'll be shut down for the season. After the All-Star break, the Knicks' leading scorer still plans on playing in his eighth All-Star game Sunday at Madison Square Garden. Melo continues to deal with lingering soreness in his left knee, which forced him to sit out Wednesday's loss to Orlando. Now, if Carmelo's season is, in fact, over, the Knicks will have a very difficult second half ahead of them. They've not won a game without him this season. 0-13. They've averaged 87.2 points per game in those games, while shooting 40.9% from the field. Both would be the worst in the league for a team this season. Ruben. Ruben with extra drive. To the Chell, and a day after Winnipeg and Buffalo pulled off the biggest trade of the season with former Rookie of the Year Tyler Myers headed to the Jets, TSN in Canada is reporting that teams are already calling the Jets to see if they might consider unloading the young defenseman already. So far, the answer is apparently no. The Jets were in Nashville on Thursday night. There's Stafford, another newly acquired Jet, and there is Tyler Myers. Looks a bit like a gazelle. First period, Preds power play expiring. Shea Weber just crushes the puck past Andre Pavlik. Weber's 13th of the season. Nashville up 1-0. Later in the first, same score. Colin Wilson with a good look on the doorstep. Pavlik with the stop. Wilson can't believe it. Could that be the one? What a save by Andre Pavlik. Second period, tied to one Preds on the power play. Philip Forsberg. Wrists it past Pavlik for the goal. The rookies 19th of the season. Nashville's up 2-1. to one. Second period, same score. Blake Wheeler gets the loose puck. And Pecorine with an incredible save. Kick save and a beauty. Keeps it a one-goal game. Third period. Just down 2-1 on the power play. Being watched by Gostad. 
Rene stops the initial shot. Brian Little, friend of Fox Sports Live, with a rebound attempt. Pecorine, one of the very best goaltenders in the National Hockey League, a Vesna candidate for sure for top goalie in the league this season. Late third, Andrew Ladd, chance the crease. Rene covers up. The Finn had 32 saves. The Preds win 3 1. Another great matchup in Tampa. East leading Lightning. Housed in the Blues, two of the league's top scoring teams. Tampa tops in goals and points. The Blues, third. First period. Alex Steen, friend of Fox Sports Live, finds TJ Oshie. Great pass. Oshie beats Ben Bishop. Fights off Anton Stroman. Perfect pass. Even went down, got back up. That's, that's his 15th of the season for Oshie. Blues on a power play. Steen finds Dimitri Yaskin. That's a long lead pass. Finn Hole on Bishop. Threads the needle to spring Yaskin for his eighth of the season. Second period. Steven Stamkos turns the puck over to David Backus. Oh, right in front, too. Backus throws it on net. Steen tipped it in. Steen's 19th of the season. Blues have a 3-1 lead. You want a nominee for the one? Yeah, take this. Oshie battling for the puck. Finds Backus. And Beach Bishop, you see that pass? Oh, wow. Went between his legs to Backus. Nets his 19th of the season. Blues win 6-3. to three. And Ken Hitchcock making history in the process as Hitchcock picks up the 693rd win of his coaching career, moving him past the legendary Dick Irvin for fourth on the NHL's all-time wins list. Blackhawks head coach Joel Quenmore remains the winningest active coach in the NHL. Still 46 wins ahead of Hitchcock. Hitchcock has acquired his 693 wins over 19 seasons. It was pretty good flow. Uh, the bench, we were flowing. We were playing four lines for the most part. and uh, Everybody was quick on, quick off, so it gave us opportunity to really roll through our, uh, our depth. But... Uh, yeah, tonight felt good. I thought Box and Osh were really jumping tonight. Uh, third period, I think we have some cleaning up to do. We have a bigger lead, so we're able to sit back a little bit. But uh, there's definitely some plays that need to get made in the third there as well. I know you know, if you're a hockey fan, this is the show to watch. We put a big priority on the sport. We enjoy the chill. Montreal has lost their last three at home against Edmonton, a team that is struggling mightily to win anything this season. Check out these Valentine's cards featuring Oilers players. I feel like for you hard and fast. <laughs> you feel the boy in my heart. Boyd Gordon and you de Clefbaum. Oscar Clefbaum, young Swedish defenseman, played over 26 minutes in this game. Third period, tied at 2-4-4. Four four. Max Patches, Pacioretty, American. Buries it, beating fast. First 25th. Montreal up 3 2, but late third, same score, two man advantage for the Edmonton Oilers. Plekinitz out of the box. Clef Bob knocks it away with his skate, emerging as one of the few bright spots in Edmonton this season. And then Clef Bob with a shot. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, second of the night. A one nominee. Did you see what he did with his stick there? That was incredible. We're tied at three. We're going to OT, so at home. Due to the Fox Sports Live drinking game. You should take a drink. There's Neil Yakupov for the shot. That goes wide. Anton oh. Lander from Clefbaum for the game winner. Beating Dustin Tokarski. Edmonton wins their fourth straight Montreal. Ducks and Canes. Canes analyst, Trip Tracy. He's quite a guy. Wearing a GoPro on his head for the game as he uh, was in between the benches. That's, uh, he's having some fun with both goalies. 